The reign of the Sun King of Louis XIV was the reign of magnificence. At the height of his rule, he had transformed the political landscape and had created numerous institutions for the production of visual splendor. The enlarged Chateau de Versailles and its new gardens would become his masterpiece, an attempt at creating a transcendent realm of mythology and enchantment. As royal power and royal art were becoming increasingly inseparable, it is not surprising that many French courtiers and wealthy clients wanted to own a part of this magnificence. This demand led to objects such as these, a large tapestry produced by a royal manufactory and a pair of bronze groups originally designed by the king's best sculptors. These were pieces that were tailored to a market that wanted to share in the golden age of French art production. The tapestry was produced by the Beauvais manufactory, founded by the king's minister of finance, Jean-Baptiste Colbert, in 1664. It was designed by painter Jean-Baptiste Monoyer and shows a scene with musicians and dancers, accompanied by a tiger and an elephant. Suspended above their heads is a fanciful framework of grotesque ornaments and plants, which are inspired by the decoration of Nero's Domus Aurea complex from 64 AD, which was rediscovered in the 15th century. While the Gobelin factory in Paris supplied the king, Beauvais focused on the private market. The mastermind behind Beauvais was Philippe Beagle, Marchand Tapissier du Roi, and with this suite of grotesque, he created one of the factory's most renowned series. Production started in the 1690s and it was still being woven during the 1720s, which is a testament to the series' visual power. Another great success were two large white marble sculptures that were created by Gaspard Marcy and François Girardon during the 1670s to be placed on the parterre d'eau of Louis XIV's garden at Versailles. Although the plan for this part of the garden was changed a bit later, the two marble groups were still executed and they were a hit among courtiers and visitors. Soon, smaller bronze reductions like these were produced to meet the demand. Marcy's group shows Boreas, the god of the north wind, abducting the Athenian princess Orithia. The second group by Girardon shows Pluto, god of the underworld, abducting Proserpina, goddess of fertility and spring. Such was the success of both groups that bronze reductions were still being produced throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, and we believe that these groups date from the 18th century. Objects such as these are symbols of the French Ancien Régime, a period characterized by shameless excess and impressive grandeur.